to hear from you, 888-957-9570. Any big deal that what I deem is a big deal because Jonathan Kaminga playing great basketball, probably the best of his career, and we've been waiting on it, all of a sudden feels like he's empowered. And I don't know if that's because he's playing good ball now, Jason, um, but I don't think this is a good look I, I just for him unless he's okay with what comes next. And who knows what comes next? You talked about the trading deadline in February. We're talking about the Warriors' strength and numbers not being an actual asset now, which would be different. But before you chime in, I just got a text message from my best friend. It's Norman Johnson in Union City, California. Would you mind if I share it with you, Jason? Yeah, go ahead. He's a big fan of yours. Okay. Will you let Jason finish a sentence? <laughs> so I told you yesterday I was going to step on you, but Norm is telling me I'm stepping too much. So the floor is yours. Appreciate you, and Norm. I'm just lay out as Stiney and I I'm going to lay out and let you finish. I get excited, man. And yeah. it's ADD. Well, it's, you know, whatever. It's, it, I, I didn't feel like you were cutting me off. But, you know, with this Kaminga thing, man, look, you got a young guy who feels like he is coming into his own. Yeah. And he's playing the best basketball of his career. And he's calling out for help. He's saying, look, I am confused. What do you need from me? I am imagining that he has had plenty of conversations with Steve Kerr. And... Clearly, he doesn't think they have been beneficial or he is still in the same spot. So now he's talking to reporters. And it's not new for Kaminga. He did it with C.J. Holmes last year, formerly of the San Francisco Chronicle. C.J. is now in uh, New York covering the Brooklyn Nets. But he did it last year, too. And I know they didn't love it. I know people around the organization didn't love it, was told that. But look, you got a young kid. He's 22 years old. He's growing into his own. And like I said, Goo, he wants to get paid. He wants to get paid. He is due for his rookie extension. I get that. You're not going to get that rookie extension or to a number that you want it if you're not out there producing, if you don't have the numbers to back it up. He wants to get paid. So that's a caveat in it, too. Forget all the winning and team camaraderie. This is also a business. He does this for a living. You got to make as much money as you can. No doubt about it. Dumas and Guru right here on 95.7 The Game, 888-957-9570. That was Jason Dumas right there telling you his thoughts on Jonathan Kaminga's comments. And I agree with everything you just said, but come on, man. Everybody's trying to get paid. Everybody's trying to do something. Am I wrong to say this might come off as selfish? No. Or Am yes, I, you are. If I'm another, if I'm st if I'm one of the OGs, that's how you're going to do us? You just talked about Russell Wilson and leadership or their lack of with Seattle. I love what I'm seeing from Jonathan Kaminga. I just, I'm blown away that you felt you didn't have to keep this in-house. And now if you are correct, and, and I know you got the sources, you're saying he's had umpteen talks with Steve Kerr about, you know, his, his role on the team. And we saw what happened as soon as that buzzer went off in L.A. and they lost to the Lakers in six. You drafted up a letter wanting to know. And what I've learned in this life is everybody's not on your time, Goo. Sometimes things you need to sit and chill and the decision will be brought upon you when it's time. Nobody's beaten at your clock. And for Jonathan Kaminga still to this day to feel in, entitled to tell a reporter it's confusing. I can get to the bucket anytime with the ball in my hands. So right then and there, and I ain't mad at the kid, but I'm blown away that he's saying some subliminals. And you tell me if I'm wrong, Jay. I don't think subliminal, anything was subliminal about subliminal it. The subliminal here is I got to pass the ball to the OGs. No, I didn't take I that read way. that as sometimes he doesn't want to. Like that's in his way uh -uh. of building his brand. I didn't interpret it that way. And, and my last thing, Jay, just because you want to get paid and it's a contract year, okay, and – this team has a system, and you got to fit yourself in the system. I just don't think saying what he said in this article to MT is the best way to go about it. I what, just don't. What do you want him to do? I don't, I don't want to say shut up. That's too strong. But <laughs> read the room. This is not going to help the Warriors get tighter. This, like, if I'm Steve Kerr or I'm Dunleavy, I'm like, man, 
this is close to going rogue as you possibly can. All right, Goo. We're going to look at it from JK, JK's perspective. He comes in, he gets drafted to a really good team. Fresh off. Was, was that? Yeah. No, no. That, was that his rookie year they won the championship? Yeah, he gets he gets he gets a championship with them his rookie year. Yeah, him and him and Modus Moody yeah. didn't play all that much, you know, rightfully so. Rookie learning the ropes, even though the guys he came in drafted with are all playing on bad teams, getting their numbers. Jalen Green, everybody getting their numbers. Second year, yeah, you know, he's kind of still finding his way. Andrew Wiggins, Andrew Wiggins goes on his leave of absence. To- gotcha. He comes in. Plays so well. Plays so well. Facts. What did he do to get rewarded for it? He got demoted. Wiggins comes back. He gets demoted. He makes one or two minor mistakes in that King series, and Steve Kerr loses all trust in him. Doesn't really play again. Doesn't play again consistently the rest of the postseason. He goes into the offseason, works hard, gets better, intentional about his work. Trying to do everything and trying to listen to the messaging of the coaching staff. Gotcha. He comes back this year. Every time you go to him, he's playing good, more or less. You know, I'm not going to say he's been perfect. That he's had some stinkers, but he's been more good than bad. And he still doesn't feel like he has a role. Now, when I said he's talked to Steve, that is me just assuming he has. Mm-hmm. I am going to assume and give the benefit of the doubt that him and his coach have had conversations. If it's not with Steve, it's with his assistant, maybe his coach aunt, one of them, one of them talking about, hey, this is what we need from you. And it seems like he's been doing that. He's been really good this year. And look, more than ever, and maybe Jonathan realizes this too, why he's a little more emboldened to talk, the Warriors need him. The last couple years, Goo, they haven't really need. They need what he brings. That's they will fantastic. not win a championship if he doesn't be himself. They need that athleticism, that rim pressure, a guy who can guard multiple positions, a guy who can jump up, grab a rebound, and lead a break himself. They need that infusion of athleticism in this roster. They need him. He probably feels that too. That's probably why I can get to the rim against anybody whenever I want. I'm trying to do. I can pass. He had a beautiful pass to Steph Curry in Denver on a little break. He gets into the lane, drops it off for Steph, Steph with the layup. They need him too. And he's probably like, look, bro, y'all need me. I'm at the point in my career where I can really help this team. You guys need what I bring. Maybe two years ago, I'm saying I can do this, I can do that. And, you know, roll your eyes. We're going to win a championship with or without you, Kaminga. It's not like that anymore. So he's essentially saying, I'm confused. What else can I do? And I am assuming, I don't know for a fact, right. I'm assuming he has done his due process. He has talked. I've been around this kid. Yeah. He he talks to these coaches. He has a good relationship with people. It's not like he's some smug kid who doesn't talk. He's a good kid he needs the Warriors as much as the Warriors need him and he just wants to play basketball and you know it's a numbers game I don't think it's ill will I don't think Steve Kerr yanks him here and they're out of ill will there's just too many mouths to feed and he's saying like look feed me Feed me, Goo. Yeah, Dumas and Guru right here on Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Dumas in for Steiny. And everything you said, you just hit it out the park. But, you know, I keep going to my dad. He was in the Navy, and he always taught me about rank. There's just a right and wrong way to do things. I've been calling for Jonathan Kaminga to get an opportunity, Jason, forever. And... You didn't play the last 338 of that game in Denver. And everything you talked about, I've seen spectacular for Jonathan Kaminga. But let's be real. The, he gets lost on defense at times. No, he oh, only oh, played 338 the whole th- quarter. Th- th- yes, sir. The whole Three. quarter. So that to me is telling me that Steve Kerr, as great as Jonathan thought he was, there were some things on Steve Kerr's checklist, which I can say is questionable because I've questioned Kerr this year and his treatment of the youngsters so it it's not resonating with Coach Kerr to where 
he was so fantastic, Jason, to where he only played that 338. My question to you, and you mentioned it with the Niners, I'm not saying J uh, Jonathan Kaminga's front running, but it's obvious to everybody you have made games, you've been in the lab, but if now you're going to buck the system and anybody from outside or even your own teammates read this article, when you say nobody can stop you, there's an old saying in sports, bench players talking like starters. Hmm. And that's what reeks of this. Like, J.K., I'm 90% in agreement with you, but I'm 100% in – you shouldn't have went public with it so soon with the bravado that you did. Jason, businesses are run. There are a lot of people that are disgruntled. Can't you meet me halfway on maybe he could have held some of these things back? Because now I read this and think when I watch Thursday when they host Miami tomorrow, I can't wait. You're reluctant to pass to the OGs. You really want to. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you're new booty here. You're the youngster. You got established guys, regardless of where they're at, because we know Steph is still in his prime, but others are slipping. But for you to come out and state what the naked eye can see from Warrior fans, I don't think you're doing yourself a service by coming out with these comments. And then, you know, that that like I would tell him and pull him to the side. Hey, Jay. 97% of what you, I went up 7% real quick, 97% of what you said is right, but there is a way to do things, and there's timing. After a game you just lost, you want to come out and say you can't be stopped? Well, ask the damn coach why you only got four minutes of run in the fourth. And again, it could have been the wrong decision by Kerr, and I would hope, Jay, because I know he wasn't getting talked to by his OGs last year, which hurt my feelings from this warrior culture where Draymond admitted I, on the road, I didn't pull the youngsters, I didn't spend enough time. And I thought that's when you bond, you know, let's, mm -hmm. let's have a beer, let's chop it up, do whatever, play some Madden. But that was not happening. So for you to say you assume, and I appreciate it, that Kerr's having these conversations with John, Jonathan Kaminga reading this article, it doesn't sound like it. See, so you're saying we got some calls too to get to Jay. Go ahead. You're saying it's not what he did; it's how he did. That's man. Look, it's tiny. I'm not. I don't have an issue. Just because you can say something, don't mean you have to, Jay. I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue with Jonathan said. I don't have an issue at all with Jonathan said. Look, he's at the point where he thinks maybe this will help him. At the end of the day, you got to do what's best for yourself. Sometimes, I don't think this is going to hurt the team. I don't. All right. I don't think it's going to hurt the team. He's just he he wants to play more. That's basically what it is. I got he wants you. to play more, and I think he's right. I think he should have a more solidified role. Okay. All right. We're going to see if that continues. Let's go. Let's see what the people think, Jay. Uh, let's go out to San Jose and welcome Austin to the program. What's up, Austin? Happy holidays, man. Yo, Austin. What's up, fellas? Happy holidays, my guy. Goose. Good to I, talk. I can't to wait you. to hear your what? thoughts on this, man. <laughs> Well, you putting it down good, Jason. Uh, welcome, man. Listen, I agree with you totally, man. I've been on, I've been on the Kaminga bandwagon for a couple of years, and Goo knows that. Uh, my thing is, I think you're right, man. He he's saying what he needs to say. Mm. Uh, he didn't say anything wrong. I like his cockiness. Uh, we need more of that on the Warriors. We don't just need the great the Draymond talk cockiness. We need guys who can actually go put the ball in the basket type cockiness. So mm. I'm all I'm I'm all about what he's doing. I think secondarily, uh, I mean. Clay and all those guys, Clay has been pouting about not coming off the bench and all that. For me right now, I'm putting Kaminga in the starting lineup, and I'm sitting either Clay or Wiggins and bringing them off the bench. It's not even a discussion as far as I'm concerned. And if it comes down to, to Kerr or Kaminga, bye-bye Kerr is my, is, my, is my opinion. I'm keeping Kaminga over Steve Kerr. That's, that's what I got, guys. Happy yeah. holidays. Wow. Happy holidays. And I wonder well, Wiggins, if that's where this thing is headed. Wiggins hasn't been starting, just Bench. just so we're all on the same page. Wiggins got benched. He he doesn't start anymore. Uh, it's been Steph, Clay, Pajemski, Looney, and has it been Kaminga the fourth guy? Yeah. And, and, and Kaminga. Mm -hmm. So, but it's all like, you know, that's why sometimes I wonder is Wiggins going to be here in March? Okay. Because Wiggins hasn't – he hasn't been starting. He's not – but there's just so many mouths to feed. It Mike Dunleavy has a work cut out for him. But 
not too many guys are saying I'm hungry. And Jonathan Kaminga is saying I'm hungry. Well, Wiggins isn't happy about yeah, not starting he anymore. He's, he's made it known. I'm not saying, hey, but he's he's doing it, quote unquote, Frank Sinatra, the right way. He's doing it his way. He ain't he ain't mouthing off to the media. So I, I'm pro JK in regard to I know he puts pressure on the rim. They need what he Goo, brings. We are the media. Is, but, we need him to talk to us. Yeah, but be honest, JK. I wonder if there's something going on about this is where I'm really at. If there, and we'll go out and get Priest here shortly. I wonder if he smells something in the water to where he now knows what you just said and it hit me in the cardiac muscle. The Warriors need him. And now he feels like he can say this with no repercussions like Y'all Warrior. can't. There, you don't have another me. They need what wonder, he brings. They no absolutely need what he brings. The timing is incredible. Here. They used to get it from Wiggins. Wiggins ain't really providing it consistently. He's had a down year. They need what Jonathan Kaminga brings. He probably senses that too, so he feels a little emboldened. Right. Let's see what the people think. We heard Austin. Let's go to Palo Alto and welcome the legend Priest. Stop by. Bless us with his presence. What's up, Priest? Yo, Priest. All right, what's going on? Dude? Talk to us about this, hey, man. Hey, Jason, listen here, man. As far as I'm concerned, everything this kid has done has been perfect as far as I'm concerned. I think he's the second best player on the team. Mm. And I've felt that way since the All-Star break of last year. Mm. When Wiggins was gone, that kid stepped up and balled out. He did. And got nothing for it. Got nothing. No playoff run. No, nothing. We lost to the Lakers because the stubborn to the point of stupid coach wouldn't play him. I'm sick of Steve Kerr. I don't. I can't stand to look at him. When he's gone, I'll celebrate. I think he's held these kids. What would Jonathan Kaminga be like if it wasn't for him? Mm. Well, this kid would be one of the top. Young players in this league, this is my opinion. He would be one of the top young players in this league if it wasn't for the coach holding him back. And he does it on purpose because he don't, he's so loyal to the big, to the big three and these vets until he can't see straight. This kid, this guy can't see the forest for the trees. I'm tired of him and I've been tired of him. Wow. I wish, I hope, I want Kaminga to get as far away from this. I'm, I, I should, I'm not going to call him a name. I, I want him to get as far away from Steve Kerr as he can get. Jonathan Kaminga is a young star in this league, soon to be superstar. And he would already be there if it wasn't for this coach. This coach is a poison to this organization. And I've been saying it for the last two years. He held everybody back last year. And, they, everybody, and the team paid for it. Look at the record since the since the championship. Look at the record. Wow, Priest. Wow. Uh, I appreciate we appreciate the phone call. Happy Strong holidays. Word. But hold on. I here. agree with I'm some a, of that. Okay. Not really to Steve and Kerr. We can. Part. We can. But what if that's where I want to start. Look at Brandon Pajemski. Has just been a d- how does he come in and fit all of a sudden? So there is some responsibility, and I know G League Elite, uh, uh, Kaminga, that's where he was at. He didn't play four years at college. Mm-mm. So there's got to be some onus on the player, too. And Jonathan Kaminga, time after time, has, has made some bonehead plays throughout his career when he's been trusted. But when you look at pods, Jason, that's exhibit A of – if you get the playbook down, I'll just say playbook early, you'll get all the run. So I guess there are some points I agree with Priest. If you're taking some responsibility on Kaminga not picking up what his job duties are yeah. and have been. Look, he he made some rookie mistakes. They wanted him to work a little harder than he worked. They wanted him to rebound the basketball. They wanted him to do the little things. But he does that now. He's not a perfect player. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to make it seem like we're talking about Kevin Durant or something here. But he's a great player, a great young player, and he just feels like he's been wrong. And I do think he's gotten the short end of the stick. I do think he earned himself a little more equity after he filled in and kept the Warriors afloat while Andrew Wiggins was out. Those are facts. I I thought he deserved a little more 
dang, I have a couple bad plays in the early in the King series, and now I'm basically out of the rotation, and I'm lucky to even see the court again. I think he earned a little more equity than that, Goo, after all he did. Well, he's year. getting it now. Well, is he? Yeah, I'm just he's eating now. We don't know what's going on when Draymond will come back or whatnot. But to make these comments, I thought it was especially after a loss. I just I thought it was a bad look for him. But just like Priest or any non or anti Steve Kerr, Jonathan Kaminga's with this team every day. Jason, he knows more than we do, and the fact that he said these comments and the fashion that he said them in leads me to believe. Is this personal with him and Kerr, or is he at a point right now where he knows he can play in this league and be a star, and it's just a matter of time? Will that be in a Warrior uniform or not? Let's go out to uh, the phones and welcome Bay Rob to the program. Bay Rob has some thoughts on Kaminga. What's up, man? Oh, Boo and Jason, check this out. Everything y'all said pretty much been on point. Kaminga got a right to open up his mouth. If you got a young stud that's coming up and he's seeing all these other players being let out the gate, but Kerr won't let him out the gate and he knows he's better than these players. He knows he's mm. stronger than these players. He knows he could jump higher than these players. He knows he could score just like these players, but first Kerr won't let him off the porch. Tell me, Goo, how would you feel if that was your son? What would you say? If your son, if Kamiga was your son right now, and you've seen all this right now, oh, I, I would be bothered. Would say, I would, I would be bothered. Sleepless nights, man. Seriously. Yeah. So let's let. I know we're almost up against it. Did you have a problem? I said these words to Steiny. We we can find them. I said, Kerr's love or public affection for uh, Pajemski, saying he needs to start. I wonder how that played to Moody and Kaminga. I wasn't trying to be messy, but it's who I am. And when I heard that love, that public, this guy has to play, I was like, he's never done that for Moody. He's never done that for Kaminga. Now, some could say, well, they didn't pick it up that fast. But Jay, the the the, the competitor in me, I thought to myself, how is Moody and JK thinking, not hating, but here goes Kerr, talking about a rookie, and here we've had some good stretches, and he's never done that. And maybe that lit the furnace under Kaminga to go out and ball, but if you look at Moody all of a sudden now, I think the strength in numbers, he's kind of the odd man out. When you know, A couple weeks back, a month ago, he was the guy bringing it. So do you think there's anything with that, or am I doing too much calculus? No, you're not doing too much. That's just human nature. That's human nature. That's human nature. Mm. I mean, they've been here three years now, and they see a, a rookie now— it's it's not because it's not earned. Right. Pajemski is a great player. He should be playing. It's not like he's getting any preferential treatment. But I'm sure Moody and Kaminga are sometimes thinking, damn, why don't I get this long rope? Like, come on. I, no, like, Moody is out of the out of the rotation you, right you, now. And you can just see it when he has the he, ball. He, 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 ain't, he, ain't, he was in that zone not too long ago. He, did, he didn't play really in Denver. And... He's out of the rotation, and that's what I mean. Like, Moody is a good player. He He's played pretty much every time yeah. he's been called upon this year, he's delivered. Remember in Sacramento where he single-handedly kept the Warriors afloat and then he got pulled for Clay I'll Thompson? It. No doubt. Even Steve acknowledged after that game. I was there in Sacramento at the game. Even Steve acknowledged, hey, I shouldn't have taken him out. Yeah, I, Jay